Hey guys, I'm Anissa Claiborne, and joining me today is Ms. Rexy Rill, yes. who is the Vice President of Operations and General Counsel of yes. Western Air. Absolutely. So Rexy, thank you so much for joining me thank today. Thank you for having me. So you guys may have recognized her from many articles, The Shade Room, she's been all over for being the Vice President of such a successful airline in the Bahamas. Rexy, what does that feel like to be at your age, so young, and doing so much? You know, it's exciting. It's a really exciting time. I feel like right now we are just so motivated by the energy that we receive from other people and just people saying that they're so inspired by our story. And it's really, you know, we're just everyday folks who just kind of saw an essential need and, and pursued it. And mm -hmm. so it, it's a good feeling and we just hope to improve upon what we're doing. And so you kind of, your career has gone many ways since yeah. all of these articles came out. It kind of was overnight, you know, social media, you gained yeah. this following base. What was that like, what was that experience like for you? Because I'm sure you were just doing your job and then yeah. you're totally taking on a new... Yeah, it was definitely, it's still kind of weird, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it, it's, a, it's a good feeling because when you realize that people are in some way... I don't know, inspired by your story or did they just feel, you know, that it's special and unique, of course, and that, that feels great. Mm -hmm. um, but it also makes you realize that, you know, there's there's more to this. It's not just, you know, it's, it was never just about profit. It's never just about doing your job. It's really about understanding that you're servicing people and, and recognizing that and having other people recognize that is a really good feeling. And um, I get messages every day from people all around the world just saying, hey, I didn't know there was a black-owned airline, <laughs> or hey, how did you start? And I'm just always grateful to hopefully encourage anybody in their dreams, you know? Yeah, and so recently you've been speaking a lot, doing you know a lot of speeches and inspiring other people to pursue yeah. their dreams. What's your advice to any woman who is struggling to push, you know, especially in an area that is male dominated, I would say. Right. You know, you're you're around mostly men, I'm yeah. sure. You and so how does that? Uh. How do you <laughs> how do you handle that? And what's your advice to women in that situation? Um, I would definitely say we only have one life to live, and sometimes we get so caught up in what other people may think that we hold ourselves back, and sometimes we sell ourselves short. Women are so multi-talented and we all have these different sides of ourselves that deserve to be expressed and deserve to be explored and so especially if you're in a male dominated industry be unapologetic for who you are and just really hold your guns straight in term of in terms of um, just number one allowing your work to show for itself and I know sometimes even that is not good enough, but that's the first standing point is putting out your best product. Mm -hmm. And then from there, continue to have faith and continue to really push what it, whatever it is that you actually believe in. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned, you know, women have many sides to them. Yeah. We know that you also do music. You do yeah. so many other things. How did you get into that and how did you start exploring that? <laughs> Well, I always wanted to do music. I, you know, I was like four or five years old when I told my parents, well, I'm going to be a lawyer and a pop star. And they're like, what the hell is going on with this girl? So, you know, but I definitely felt, especially after law school, I was like, there's no way I could pursue music or put out music and still be thought of as some rational thinking, logical attorney. But I think after a few years and, you know, really just being um, busy with work, you need that outlet and and it's something that kept coming into my spirit as they say and so I was like you know I'm gonna do it and I and I don't regret it and and what's even more surprising is like other professionals have been the one who have been most supportive mm. it's like you know my accountant and <laughs> my you know like our finances they were like this is great continue yeah. doing it and I, those were the ones that I was probably most concerned about what they would think and so it's it's really good. I think I think you know people can relate to it because we all have these different sides. You know, you can be in corporate world or corporate America and still play in a band or pursue your modeling career or do something else. You know, yeah. with yourself. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So when you took off on Instagram, I'm assuming that's like the main social media platform that yeah. you've really gotten a lot of attention off of. Yeah. Um, I noticed that you also got backlash yeah. of you know opinions and different yeah. things because you are running a family owned and it takes away nothing you know yeah. to, I saw a lot of the comments and yeah. at first being a person who was just doing their job how did you handle 
going from yeah. just, you know, a person doing their job to being this kind of like spokesperson for, mm -hmm. yeah, right. how did you handle that? Yeah, it well, number one, I, I realized I shouldn't read a lot of comments. <laughs> number two, I there's always going to be this bias when you're in a family business that is such an easy transition. Mm -hmm. And what I think a lot of people don't re realize is that family businesses require an entirely different emotional skill set. Because you not only have, you have to be cognitive of whatever it takes to make the business functional, but you actually have to be conscious about what your family is feeling, how you guys interact, and how it actually flows. Mm -hmm. So it just requires a lot of work and then a lot of understanding. And, and everything is earned in my family. There's no just sitting back and doing what you have to do. So, was I a little offended? Yes, but at the same time, they don't really know me, so yeah. I get it. You know, it does look like you know a plushed, fun situation, but I take pride in making work look easy, though it's not. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I think people, I think people don't even think that being a part of a family business is even more pressure yeah, than just absolutely. being someone hired in because you know you have expectations your parents have like the most expectations from you you know so you have to live yeah, up to them and there's and, legacy too right you know you can't be the one that you know signed on and then all of a sudden it's chaos you know so you want to you want to see that continuous growth and expansion and progress mm -hmm. and so that's what i feel like we have been doing and i want to continue doing that by the grace of god you know? yeah yeah so uh, what are any other ways that you feel like social media has helped your um, your own, I don't know, maybe if it's just for reaching out and meeting new people, like how yeah. has social media affected you the most? Well, first of all, I love people in general. I mean, I like to hear other people's stories and and that's what it's really helped with in terms of just exposing me to new people. and them being aware of who I am and if I relate to you and you know we get along I, I like to have a you know a dialogue back and forth with people I'm very open in that regard and it's just open kind of a new doors of opportunities just in terms of like, like you were saying speaking engagements and and just doing different events and and just getting a chance to connect with people and I think that's what it's all about and and one thing I love about social media is that you know, representation is one of those things that you didn't know you need until you receive it. Mm -hmm. And like me seeing, you know, whether it's SZA or Lupita and seeing women that look like me, it made me happy and, and you know, subconsciously feel like you're beautiful or you feel like, oh, I could do this or I could be successful. And I like to feel like hopefully that's what, you know, other young girls are feeling towards me, like, oh, lawyer into aviation she does music well that's different i could do that if that's what they're getting out of it that's excellent yeah yeah i just want to say thank you for being one who isn't afraid to step out of the box because i think for me it's you know you see people kind of stick to one thing so i just want to say thank you so much for thank being you, one to show me. people that they can do other things. You're so gonna go you. so far. We already know. We already know. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me, and thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time.